Welcome back on board the Starship. I'm talking with Tony Farrell, who is an ex-principal intelligence analyst for South Yorkshire Police. And he's been talking about um, a terror threat assessment that you had been assigned to um, author or, or prepare. Now, you went home on the, on the evening of the 7th of July okay. and you, you thought, no, I'm not going to do the report in the way that they want me to. I, I'm going to say it how I believe it is. That's so, right. So what happened when you went on the 8th to deliver your report to the police? Well, having sweated all that evening uh, on the 7th of 7th, um, I got up extra early and went into work really early um, and um, resolved in my own mind to um, make my stance. Mm -hmm. I knew full well that they wouldn't uh, accept a, a strategic threat assessment that had narrative in that uh, was incriminated internally in any sense, shape or form. Mm -hmm. So uh, I felt this is an absurd situation. So um, I, what I did was um, alert management to my stance in such a way that would shock them. Mm -hmm. I produced a front sheet of a strategic threat assessment matrix model, a simplified model of the strategic threat mm -hmm. that was absurd looking, that right. really um, zoomed in mm -hmm. on two things and two things alone. Mm -hmm. And that was the threat from terrorism mm -hmm. and the truth behind 9-11 and the truth behind 7-7. Mm -hmm. With all other domains of criminality relegated to no importance whatsoever. Right. Because I thought this was the single most important issue to deal with when we're talking in terms of a strategic threat, which this was what it was. So the... W w w the way that the information is presented is as a matrix. So there's the different types of threat and what, what is likely to happen yeah. or the outcomes of those threats and you've just basically filled it in. I mean, I've got them here um, saying 100%, 100%, 100% is, is the threat of internal terrorism or internal tyranny. So you, just, so you present this to, to and, and what happened then? Well, it shocked. It had the effect. Uh, my manager clearly looked disconcerted and, you know, pleaded with me. Tony, we can't do business like this, mm -hmm. which I could understand we couldn't do business like this, but neither could I be mm -hmm. doing business which would render me complicit in a lie. I mean, so you would have been happy if it allowed you to put it in, along with perhaps other threats in there as well, but you just wanted that stated as a threat. I, I would have been happy if management would have actually shown some understanding on this issue in terms of, I wanted some... I, wouldn't be, I wasn't naive enough that this could go out in, in, a, in a form that said it, it, the threat was from internal tyranny. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to alert management mm -hmm. to that very fact. Mm -hmm. And I offered, I offered to provide them with a full report that would justify right. why I was of the opinion that the threat was internally. Now... I mean, I guess uh, but the, they could have compromised, I suppose. They could have said, OK, we'll let you put it in as long as you say that these people are deluded, that they're a threat. It's a threat that these people think uh, there was false flag, but... Well, I didn't... Not, no, I, 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 you I, I'd weighed up which weighed story up. I believed. Yeah. And on balance, uh, I was totally persuaded, yeah. as far as, uh, almost as near certain as you can be, mm -hmm. that the government's versions of both 9-11, the respective government versions of 9-11 and 7-7 seven, seven were becoming so ridiculous, yeah. a surrendered and totally unreliable, and that was, I don't know exactly what, how everything happened, there were far more plausible hypotheses out there that explained the situation and completely debunked mm -hmm. the government's stories. Yes. And, uh, and that was being covered up mm -hmm. now, and, and I couldn't, in, 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 in my conscience, I couldn't do anything that would countenance the perpetuation of that lie. Mm -hmm. So then, on the 8th, um, you're there, you've presented these two matrices to, to this officer, and you thought you were then going to go and present this to the, to the board? No, 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 you, you definitely not. They, I knew that, the, that the, the information I presented to them would, be, uh, would have no utility mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a formal-looking strategic threat assessment. So right. basically, the, 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 the plan to get to the board meeting that afternoon was now derailed. I knew that. Right. And I wasn't going to hand over um, the work, I'd the other work I'd done, because it would be totally misleading. 
right. of me to have done so. It would mislead on the threat. Mm -hmm. And I, would not, I was not prepared to bear false witness. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is simply in accordance with their own professional standards mm -hmm. for honesty and integrity. Yes. So, as well as my faith about not, bearing, you know, not breaking a ninth commandment of thou shalt not bear false witness on somebody, mm -hmm. and I would have had to have done that to complete it to their satisfaction, I was not prepared either to uh, breach their own, the very own professional standards about honesty and integrity. So what happened then, Tony? Well, clearly at that stage, they, they were disappointed that they were going to miss a deadline for the board meeting. But I had already planned after this to take three, day, three weeks annual leave. That was scheduled in and planned. So uh, they, they asked me uh, to explain, would I go home and put together a report uh, to explain my situation, to explain my stance, why I did what I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to turn that round um, within a few days. So. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, you know, in a, in a state of mind whereby I'd, I'd now put my head above the parapet, I now had to explain myself. So I put together a report specifically for my, uh, uh, my director of intelligence mm -hmm. explaining why I felt compelled to make my stance in the way I did in terms of my role as a principal intelligence analyst, mm -hmm. uh, my role as a, a, a Christian, my role as... Um, um, just a, an ordinary citizen um, and an analyst. So from a number of perspectives, all this was giving me a problem. It was giving the organization a problem and a dilemma. Mm -hmm. So I put my own self-assessment down for the purposes of management for them to consider what they should do with this situation. And this document that you drew up while you were off work, um, it's, 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 a ta it's in tabular form and it says viewpoint held by the principal analyst and the probability assessment. So you list various um, factors involved in 9-11 and 7-7 and you give, a, you give out your probability of that being true. That's right. And yeah. these are all like 9, 0 0.99, 0 0.95, 0 0.95, 0.90. Yeah. This, this, was, uh, th th this was my personal uh, report. Mm -hmm. Uh, on my my reasons for doing what I did, mm -hmm. um, and I am using open source information mm -hmm. to uh, um, put a probability assessment on a hypothesis that uh, have come up have been correct. Right. So whilst I can't say that I was absolutely certain of these things happening the way I did, I made some strategic inferences mm -hmm. as to what was going on, such as the New World Order with its satanic ideology such as the false flag operations of 9-11 and 7-7 and the rationale and the reason behind those which touched on the wars, the immoral wars that our countries were perpetrating in Afghanistan and Iraq mm -hmm. under false colours. Okay. Now you, this was submitted on the 12th of July, this report, is that right? That's correct. And then did you get any feedback from that? Um, the, the report wasn't read uh, in front of me um, by my manager. I, I was um, asked really to go on uh, annual leave and leave the office. Uh, privileges were withdrawn at that stage. So right. that clearly had, at that stage management had concerns about what I was raising and about um, why I was raising these. Now, the only thing that happened um, before I went off, the director of intelligence did pop his head around the corner just with a thumbs up sign to say that he found the report uh, acceptable for the purposes he needed that report right. for. So he put, he put his thumbs up to just kind of say yes this is what we wanted. That seems a strange, why do you think he put his thumbs well, up? Well he wanted, he, he, he clearly the, the, the police understandably wanted to know exactly why I felt con so compelled to make the stance I did. Uh -huh because they had to explain away the fact that an important strategic board meeting had been cancelled. Had been not cancelled, but a, a, an important assignment had not been delivered. Right. Right. So I had to explain my I had some explaining to do. Yeah. And that was the report that did it. Uh, so I, it was a report that held no punches. Mm -hmm. uh, I told them as it was, um, warts and all, and uh, that was the report that was the report that ultimately led to my dismissal. Mm -hmm. I then went on annual leave for three weeks um, with one-to-one -one contact from a detective chief inspector. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, that uh, morphed into uh, gardening leave, almost like suspension. Gardening leave, that, that's, yeah. that's a term where 
It's a bit well, like it's, it's, it's close to being suspended. I'm, I'm, being I'm not suspended. under any disciplinary action at this stage. Right. I'm simply, it's not in the organisation's best interest to have me at work while, right. while they're con contemplating what they were going to do with me. Yeah. So it then uh, occurs that there's a disciplinary hearing schedule for the 2nd of September in 2010. Yeah. So from the, the last time I have uh, contact within the organisation itself is, mm -hmm. the, is the 12th of July, and then I'm on leave for three weeks, then right. gardening leave. So, and then, then you were asked to go to this um, hearing? Appeal. Uh, yeah, this, sorry, this, this disciplinary hearing. Disciplinary hearing. Yes, where I've, I've already been notified that there's a potential that I could be dismissed. Right, okay, so tell us what happened when you went to this disciplinary hearing. Um, yes, I, um, I went alone. Uh, I didn't have any, uh, I chose not to have any union representation. Um, I wasn't in the union. Um, I didn't need anybody with me. I uh, presented my own defence mm -hmm. and uh, the Director of Intelligence uh, presented the management case. Now, uh, and uh, the Director of Finance, a uh, member of Senior Command Team, um, decided that my beliefs were um, made, made my position as principal intelligence analyst untenable. Right. He did not say that my beliefs were incorrect, incorrect, he said they could be true. He did not say that there was any allegation of any kind of misconduct whatsoever. So, um, so he actually said they may be true? Yeah, right. it's, it's not just said, it's, it's, it's written down in the transcripts that, uh, you know, th this was a quite a solemn occasion in one sense. They, it, you know, it, it was a bizarre in one sense right. because they were sacking me. Uh, but you felt I've not done anything with, wrong in a way. Right. So it's just this, an incompatible is, belief. Is this the point where one of the officers said, uh, "Tony, we're never going to change them"? No, that that, that wasn't that was the, in another the, the, at an earlier meeting with the director of intelligence. Uh -huh. And when we first when I first broached the subject of the notion of 9/11/77 being inside jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, then there wasn't any, you know, from my director of intelligence, there certainly wasn't any attempt to um, rubbish my uh, notion. Uh, on the contrary, it was almost like, Tony, what can we do about it? You'll know, Never we're just the foot soldiers of the government. Right. So, so we can take it from that, that then that there's some sympathy within the force with the certain people who, who don't dispute what y your viewpoint. It's difficult to say. I, uh, I'd be second guessing. Uh, right. I think, I, I, th I think, having alerted them to the evidence out there, uh, they may well have been aware of it before. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. But I was satisfied in my own mind that I'd done my level best to alert them to a potential problem. Now, if they'd chosen to look into it, just where the leads I'd given them, mm -hmm. then I, I believe that they're intelligent enough people to have formed an opinion. Mm -hmm. that there's something in it. Okay, so at, at that particular um, hearing, uh, you were sacked then at that point in September? At the hearing on the, 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 the 2nd of September, I was dismissed from service uh, as a result of having um, a, of my position as principal intelligence analyst being untenable uh, because of my incompatible beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I was given three months uh, pay in lieu of notice. Right. But they didn't actually say that your beliefs were incorrect. They just said that they're incompatible with the force, no. with the police mm -hmm. force. Okay. Senior managers have never, uh, the senior managers have come into contact with. Um, I've never said my beliefs are incorrect. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned um, a, a priest that you went to see. A minister. Sorry, minister. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit, Tony? Because you said that that you would go and see this minister, which which is part of the. the Please, the oh, sorry, uh, don't want to talk across purposes here. I, I, I have not, since the dismissal, I have not been in contact with any employee right. of South Yorkshire Police, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in any kind of inf you know, informal chat or anything like that, um, other than through the formal process of the hearing, mm -hmm. uh, with one exception. And that's the, um, I have uh, from time to time met up with um, the chaplain the, pr the police headquarters chaplain, mm -hmm. who ha has similar Christian beliefs to myself, who I knew before uh, any of the uh, issues arose about that led to my dismissal. So um, I 
probably on a on a base a regular basis of about once a month mm -hmm. would meet at, ch at a local church in Sheffield just just to keep in contact with him mm -hmm. uh, and to pray over the situation and mm -hmm. um, he was a bit of a link back to South Yorkshire police and we would undoubtedly discuss you know um, what might be happening right. uh, but it was all speculative because he, he wouldn't necessarily know an awful lot what was happening right. um, but I was actually relating back to him how I was feeling obviously you know in a position of being dismissed and now you know trying to you know decide what to do in the future with uh, right. having been dismissed from so police service. D does that take away any of your pension rights the fact that you're dismissed in that way? Yeah, yeah there's been an actuary calculation uh, a preliminary one um, based on um, how it will affect my pension at the age of 66 and uh, the initial report that came out that was presented in front of the judge to consider was of the order of £140,000. That would assume, that was on the assumption that I would be in paid employment by now. But you've not determine. lost any pension that's already been accrued? No, that's, that, that, in that's, a way that's frozen. That's frozen, right. Yeah. So you've just, you've lost potential pension earnings for the future. That's right, yes. By, by, right, yes. Okay. Um, so you decided to fight this decision then, Tony? Yeah, I mean, I'd always, uh, initially I didn't want to um, appeal, um, but it was bizarre really because at the appeal hearing, at the um, appeal hearing, with, I, I, I went to the police authority and it was almost as if the dismissing officer, that would have been the director of finance, was encouraging me to appeal to the really? police authority. Uh, so they acknowledged that I'd, I'd, I'd more or less say, look, I, don't, I, I will not appeal. If you feel the need to sack me, mm -hmm. so be it. And I'm not, I, so initially I didn't want to appeal, but I was persuaded Mm -hmm. um, from a number of angles, but one, not least, from their own South Yorkshire police manager who were dismissing me, who said, you, you know, I know you've said you want appeal, but there is an appeal mechanism, mm -hmm. and it's the police authority, which is a different animal, different body, to the chief constable. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so I, after being dismissed, I went to my, you know, I sought legal advice for the first time, right. uh, and it was upon that advice that I made the decision to, to appeal mm -hmm. and put the appeal into the South Yorkshire Police Authority mm -hmm. Appeals Committee. Okay then, Tony. Well, we're going to go for another break now. And after the break, we're going to continue with, with Tony's story as it unfolds because um, it's at a fairly crucial stage. You, you, you're awaiting um, a tribunal at the moment. But uh, we'll talk more after this. <laughs> 